Three sea otters shot and killed in protected waters. Tonight, the search for the culprits and the significant reward for their capture. Plus. Tonight's big story, California's lack of water is so serious that right now President Barack Obama is in Fresno to address the drought. Millions of dollars in aid could be on the way for farmers and ranchers across California, but what does it mean for the Central Coast and our multi-billion dollar ag industry? We check in with major crop industries on their reaction. Plus, is the president ignoring endangered wildlife also struggling from the drought? We have team coverage on what President Obama announced and what it means for you. Your Central Coast News starts right now. Now in high definition, Central Coast News right now. And first tonight, President Obama promises to do all he can to alleviate California's drought crisis. Good evening, I'm Mark, this is Jess. Well, the president laid out his plans in Fresno, but not to the public. Today's water meetings were held behind closed doors. So we're told the president called on federal facilities in California to immediately curb water use. Also, he will free up $100 million in aid for livestock producers and USDA disaster programs. $3 million will go to help rural communities who are running dangerously low on water. And the president wants to invest in more climate change research. For tonight's big story, we'll cover how the president's plan impacts the Central Coast. We have team coverage, including Ricardo Navarro and Marissa Schwartz. We want to begin with her, who has the latest on local growers. Marissa, what did you find out? Well, Mark, the majority of the strawberries grown in the U.S. are grown right here in California. And so, of course, it takes a lot of water to grow all those strawberries. In fact, it takes about a glass of water per day for each of these little plants. So the president's message today is on water is very important. The California Strawberry Commission says it's too early to tell what his promise of assistance from the federal government will mean for growers. But the commission says drought is becoming an issue for strawberry farmers. However, I found out growers were some of the first to focus on conservation in the state. In the 1970s, they started using drip irrigation and that plastic you see underneath the plant is also used to conserve water. The commission says they aren't in a bind yet because their water comes from several sources. Depends on their location and what their water source is. What's interesting about strawberries is that um, they plant their plants in the fall. So that means they planted their plants not knowing what winter would bring this year. Now, because the winter has been so dry, the commission says farmers are continuing to learn how to conserve because the bigger concern will be what will happen to their crop that they'll plant this fall. Now, the Strawberry Commission hopes that some of this federal funding will be to help them with uh, new research and uh, new technology to move the industry forward. Live in Watsonville, Marissa Schwartz, your Central Coast News. Marissa, thanks for that. I mentioned earlier, we also have Ricardo Navarro on this story. We turn to him now. Ricardo, some environmentalists you spoke with are un happy with the president's focus. Why is that? Well, Mark, they feel like the president is only getting one side of the impact of the drought is having when fisheries and the environment should be part of the focus. They say thousands of jobs are also on the line. In droughts, um, one of the first impacts is that there is less water for irrigation of crops. But for Frank Emerson, co-chair of the Alliance for Sustainable Fisheries, that's not the whole picture. It's true that fisheries are often sort of left, quote unquote, or in the dust. Um, and that's unfortunate because it's during droughts when those fisheries are more at risk than, uh, than normal times. Emerson said with the drought, rivers are low or aren't flowing at all. That's had a serious impact on fisheries, especially salmon and steelheads locally and statewide. Loss of water causes habitat degradation, less food for fishes, and numbers begin to decline. And there's tens of thousands of fishing jobs in the state, from recreational to commercial. Fresh salmon on your dinner table is, to us, just as important as fresh corn or, other, or lettuce, frankly. Emerson said what's scary is, during these times, environmental standards are relaxed so water can be used elsewhere. Estuaries like the Sacramento Delta begin to collapse, but with that... So do all those jobs, so do all the local communities around the Delta, the farmers around the Deltas are impacted. So it's not only 
just a small subset of, of, of our community. It's a broad community. Fishermen and environmentalists hope that just like farmers will get aid, they hope aid also goes to them to keep the habitats healthy so wildlife stays thriving but also keeps commercial fishing jobs around. In the newsroom, Ricardo Navarro, your Central Coast News. Ricardo, thanks for that. We do want to fast forward here to Central Coast News at 6 p.m. tonight as our drought coverage continues. One Central Coast water district is hoping some federal funding heads its way as its groundwater basins are bone dry. Again, Again, that's tonight on the news at 6 o'clock. And this just coming into Central Coast News, President Obama speaking right now in Southern California. Let's take a listen. I send to Congress next month will include $1 billion in new funding for new technologies to help communities prepare for a changing climate, set up in, uh, incentives to build smarter, more resilient infrastructure. And finally, my administration will work with tech innovators and launched new challenges under our climate data initiative focused initially on rising sea levels and their impacts on the coast but ultimately focused on how all these changes in weather patterns uh, are going to have an impact uh, up and down uh, the, the United States not just on the coast but inland as well and how do we start preparing for that and that has to be work that we do together this cannot be a, bi uh, a, a partisan uh, uh, endeavor. You know, one of the great things about that town hall that I just came out of, not everybody agreed on anything, <laughs> um, except people did agree that we can't keep on doing business as usual. That's what people did understand, that there has to be a sense of urgency about this. And issues like the federal government helping states to build infrastructure to adapt and ensure economic development and that families and workers are able to prosper. There's nothing new about that. We just saw a, a photograph of President Kennedy and uh, current Governor Brown's dad building some of the aquifers that have been so important to uh, the economy of the state for decades. If we were able to do that then, we should be able to do it now. It's just a matter of us making sure that we're not putting politics ahead of trying to get things working. Uh, our work with Governor Brown uh, and his administration is going to continue. Uh, Californians have all had to come together and already make sacrifices, big and small, to help your neighbors and your state get through this. Uh, the good news is California is always on the cutting edge. Uh, already you use water far more efficiently than you did decades ago. Uh, you do it smarter, Joe was explaining just how this drip irrigation that you see in this region has made many of these farms much more efficient when it comes to water utilization. And so we know that we can uh, innovate and meet this challenge, uh, but we've got to start now. We can't wait. Uh, so I want to make sure that every Californian knows, whether you're NorCal, SoCal, <laughs> here in the Central Valley, uh, your country is going to be there for you when you need it uh, this year, but we're going to have to all work together uh, in the years to come to make sure that uh, we address the challenge and leave this incredible land uh, and bounty to our children and our grandchildren uh, in at least as good shape as we found it. So thank you very much, everybody, for the great work that you guys do. And uh, uh, I've already told the governor, as well as uh, all your outstanding representatives here, that uh, our administration is going to stay on this, and we are prepared to cooperate with local state uh, officials uh, throughout and that's not just in California because we're going to see some similar problems in places like Colorado, uh, Nevada, uh, some of the neighboring western states uh, and so part of the conversation is also going to have to be a regional conversation uh, but this is something that uh, I'm very committed to. We're going to make sure to get it done working together. All right, President Barack Obama speaking there live from Fresno. I mentioned earlier Southern California. That was from the Central Valley in Fresno this evening, really addressing the seriousness of this drought situation. Well, we thought a lot of those meetings took place behind closed doors, but finally they're obviously speaking to the public with a the crowd there after a visit to one of the farms. And just recapping here, at one point he mentioned the billion dollars in new technology um, for climate smarter infrastructure. But I also thought interesting here, he, he mentioned a lot about Californians um, saying that, you know, 
know, we've already had to come together to make sacrifices big and small and also that every Californian knows, and he stressed this near the end, that your country is here for you when you need it and also in the years to come. All right, more drought coverage coming up this evening on the news at 6 p.m. Meantime, we have a drought page set up on our website. You could find video and stories along with links on how to conserve water. Just visit KIONRightNow.com, click under the news tab, and for instant coverage, be sure to follow Central Coast News on Facebook and Twitter. And back here locally, a reward is now being offered for information leading to the person responsible for shooting and killing three sea otters. Cassandra Arsenal joining us live now from Pacific Grove with that story. Cassie? Well, Mark, there are 3,000 southern sea otters in these waters. So shooting one is not only horrific, but it's a federal offense. And the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has been investigating this case for about six months, and now they're asking for the public's help. The researchers at the Monterey Bay Aquarium found the first dead sea otter, but had no idea at the time it was shot. The sea otter's coat is thick enough that it's not outwardly visible. Michael Murray, director of veterinary services, says after an exam, they could confirm it was a gunshot wound. And it wasn't long after that, two more otters with gunshot wounds were found in the same exact area. Because these sea otters are federally protected, the investigation got passed on to the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. Well, after that, we basically retain the carcass until we can go through those chain of custody, chain of custody steps to, to transfer it over to law enforcement so they can begin their forensic evaluation. You know, we're all horrified. Um, you know, this is, it's a sea otter. It's a marine mammal. Hey, there's no justification for it. I just, we were, we were shocked. Uh, everyone was pretty upset about it. Murray says this kind of case is rare in this area, but last fall, Vancouver Aquarium's Marine Mammal Rescue saved another sea otter that was wounded and blinded after being shot several times. Now, the Monterey Bay Aquarium says the community's input and help in solving this investigation is essential to bring the people responsible for this and hold them accountable. In Pacific Grove, I'm Cassandra Arsenal, your Central Coast News. Well, getting to more local news here, after announcing his re-election, Congressman Sam Farr gave an update on the status of the Veterans Cemetery project there on the former Fort Ord. He says phase one is funded and on track with the collaboration of federal, state, and local money. The state is drawing up the plans and putting together an environmental review. So contractors will start bidding in June. Construction could start in the fall to eventually open in 2016. Coming up tonight on Central Coast News at 10 on the CW and at 11 here on KION, the CSUMB women's basketball team is getting national TV coverage. Athletics director Kirby Gary says tomorrow's home game will be broadcast live on CBS Sports Network, that channel reaching 99 million homes. And he says it's their first ever TV game, a big deal here for this Division II school. The production crew is rolling in this evening and we'll have a look at how the campus is getting hyped up as the crews set up shop in Marina. Still to come here on Central Coast News, cleanup begins after a massive storm slammed the East Coast. So is the worst behind them. Also blame the weather for this mess. Quite the pile up in Pennsylvania. This is Central Coast News, now in high definition.